Time Sports. of ancient folklore, the fire-breathing dragon symbolized strength, power, and invincibility that struck fear in any who dared oppose it. Tonight, ten warriors will brave the cage of combat inspired by the spirit of the dragon. Gina Carano, Julie Kedzie here on Showtime. Ladies and gentlemen, now making her way to the cage of Elite XC, please welcome women's MMA ground expert, Julie Kedzie. Gina. Julie Ketsey, the native of Greenwood, Indiana, power fighter, often referred to as a brawler, and uh, Bill, she showed off her guns during the uh, pre-fight interview, and my goodness, uh, obviously making me look uh, rather weak. Oh, I can't say the same thing, but uh, your boy Glazer over here can say the same <laughs> you thing know, to you, but... Moral, that's not saying a lot, though, Moral. Hey, come on now. She uh, definitely a fighter who was uh, also a socially conscious human being, guys. Uh, you know, one of the great things about mixed martial artists is their stories, their biographies, and she was once arrested with 300, get this, nuns during a political uh, <laughs> protest, a peace activism uh, display in Fort Benning, Georgia, so not only is she a tremendous fighter, but socially conscious and very cerebral as well a self-proclaimed bookworm who is often reading rather than watching tv or movies her favorite author is ernest hemingway she wants to author a successful debut here at elite xc destiny And now, ladies and gentlemen, joining us to the red corner, her opponent, women's Muay Thai sensation, Gina Carano. Boxing may have Layla Ali, but mixed martial arts has this stunning beauty from Las Vegas, Nevada, Gina Carano, who she said it best, she's not just another pretty face, she is a Muay Thai maniac who has, as we mentioned, Bill, been very successful in Thailand, training under Master Toddy in Vegas, but uh, while she may be the queen of Muay Thai, she has said to us specifically she is very curious about her ground game. Does that sound like she's very confident about her ground game? 
game. Well, in, in speaking with her, it doesn't sound like she's extremely confident in it, you know, but she has trained in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Julie Ketsy, on the other hand, has been training with Eric Paulson, so uh, we all know how, what an unbelievable ground game Paulson brings to, uh, brings to MMA. You know, guys, when you have female fighters also, because you don't have, you know, the power of a heavyweight boxer or something like that, a heavyweight MMA guy, you get a lot more technical. You tend to find from the, from the ladies that they are a lot more technically perfect than some of their teammates or men. Let's go now to the tail of the tape. Gina Carano is 24. Julie Jules Ketsy is 25. Carano is 5'8, 141 pounds. Ketsy is 5'5, 137 pounds. Carano, of course, a Muay Thai practitioner. Let's go now to classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, Pro Elite presents an Elite XE women's MMA attraction scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Introducing our judges scoring from cage side, we have from Pittsburgh, North Carolina, Bill Clancy. From Ocean Springs, Mississippi, Keith Hughes. And from Memphis, Tennessee, Jeff Mullen. All right, fans, here we go to the fighters. Introducing to you first, on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, standing five feet, five inches, she weighed in at 137 pounds, specializing in Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Her record stands at eight wins, four losses, to have two submissions to her credit. Representing Mario Roberto fight team of the Indiana Jiu Jitsu Academy, hailing from Greenwood, Indiana, introducing Julie Kedzi. And her opponent across the cage on my left, fighting out of the red corner, standing five feet eight inches, she weighed in at 141 and one quarter pounds. A mixed martial artist joining us in the tradition of Muay Thai. She is undefeated in her campaign with a record of three wins, no losses, with two of her wins coming by way of knockout. Representing Master Toddy Jim and fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, introducing the undefeated Gina Carano. our referee in charge of this bout, Steve Mazzagatti. All right, ladies. All right, ladies, this is three five-minute rounds. You know the rules. We all expect a good, clean, fair fight. Obey my commands. Protect yourself at all times. Come out ready to fight. Good luck and hook them up. Correction from Steve Mazzagatti, the referee, I'm used to the men, I'm sure. Three five-minute rounds. This will be contested under three three-minute rounds. There she is, the Muay Thai Demoness. Gina Carano, a professional Muay Thai record of 12-1-1, one, and one, undefeated in MMA at 3-0 and oh with two knockouts. Her dad, a former professional right, football ready. player in the you're NFL, Jay, a backup for the D D Dallas Cowboys at quarterback. And now she is about to, well, want to score a touchdown here in her debut at Elite XC. And I think whenever you see somebody from Muay Thai, you're going to see a lot of knees, a lot of low leg kicks, and of course, a lot of striking standing up. We talked about Kedzie being very extremely strong physically. She is also known for overpowering your opponents in the clinch. So, Bill, you being the Muay Thai man, it'll be interesting to see what happens when they do get to close quarters. I think when they come in tight, then uh, Kedzie's going to want to take it to the ground. There's a nice head kick by Toronto. Um, I don't believe that, that uh, Karana wants to go to the ground. I don't think this is the place for her to learn it. I think she wants to stay on her feet. And the book on Karana is that she is able to be taken down. And while her shot defense is improving, it is at times spotty. Although right now in the Greco-Roman clinch, they're jockeying for position along the fence. A nice knee by Ketsy and breaks out of the clinch with a boom right hand. What she's doing, she's willing to eat some punches, eat some elbows, just to get in to get a closer distance. And you do that to try and get somebody to the ground. And they're pummeling now, turning Corrado around on the cage, and Corrado going to what she knows best. Muay Thai knee strikes on the ground now, and you know that she's just going to let Julie Kenzie get back get up back, to her I'll feet. Her and unfortunately for Kenzie, when she Fight. tries to pull Corrado in tight, 
that's when she's susceptible to the elbows. That's when she's susceptible to the knees. Especially when they're locked up, you do something called breaking the grappler's agreement, which means you break off and try and throw one of those elbows. Dorado doing a good job with the strikes, but Kepsi a little wild right now in the clinch. She needs to settle down a bit, going for the shot. Nice takedown defense there by Corrado, who now looks to take the back of Julie Kepsi. And we'll see just how well she has done with her ground game as she turns Kepsi around, looking for side control, but she's in the open half guard here, Jake. So obviously Trish trying to keep her in close so she doesn't get those elbows rained down on her. See, you can see that Corrado's trying to get back out, trying to get some distance to use that ground and pound. For the first time ever, women mixed martial arts being shown. And it's about time we got out of the dark ages on a variety of factions when it comes to mixed martial arts. Going mainstream here with Julie Ketsy and Gina Corrado. And so far, Corrado is winning the stand-up battle. Yeah, it looks like Toronto's breaking her down. She's cutting her down low. She's coming up with her overhand right, and uh, I, I think it's only a matter of time. Every time she hits her also with one of those overhand rights, you know that Kedzie's only defense is to try and go down low for a takedown. Toronto knows that. Kedzie comes in with a record of 8-4 and four with two submissions. Her biggest weakness is her inability to finish fights. She's able to control fighters, but she is prone to stalling and is not known for her, well, knockouts or submissions. And now Toronto just beginning to impose her will here, mixing it up with her hands and feet. And Kedzie needs to keep moving to her right in the next round. And, and she finished the round with an exclamation point. That right hand by Corrado as we will now go into the corners. And let's listen in to what the respective corners have to say. And you're letting her hit you. You're standing right here in this cage. I want you in the middle, okay? You're not committing to your shots. You're not committing to your kicks. You're not committing. Get out there and bully her around, okay? Stop letting her bully you. Julie, you've won this fight, okay? This fight is yours. You can win this fight. Forget about that first round. Let's come out strong in the second, all right? Move. I need you moving, okay? Drink. There goes the shoot. If you notice here, again, you see Carano on top. This is not her strength, but we talked about how she's trying to go to the ground, see what she could do, trying to work for a rear naked choke. Big right hand, she landed that all round long, and Kedzie knows that. Again, the next round, in order to counteract that, Kedzie keeps, she needs to move to her right, away from that strength of that hand. Look for Carano to come in with a low kick, to come in with an overhand right, with a followed by a left hook. Just to give you an idea of how much uh, these two like to keep it standing, they're on the mat for only 13 seconds the first time, 35 seconds the second time for less than a minute total. And you know Gina Carano, she's very happy with that statistic. Yeah, that's where she wants to be. She is very, very comfortable on her feet. I'm not so sure Kedzie really believes in herself right now also, just judging by what we heard uh, in between the rounds. Well, Kedzie trying to pull out all the stops, spinning back kick back to the clinch. Not a traditional tie clinch, and they take down by Kedzie, but you can see the balance in favor of Corrado with the, the headlock here. Kedzie going to a close guard immediately. That's a nice body scissor just to keep Aaron close. Again, with the person, for people out there who aren't familiar with their sport, the person on the bottom, you either, want, either want to go for a submission or just keep somebody in close so you don't have the range to land elbows, land punches to your face. One thing Corrado is known for is her great cardio. She can push a fight all three rounds, but Bill, right here, we can see that there is maybe a lack of a ground game, but she really doesn't seem to be doing much. And of course, you can see, or hear the referee, Steve Mazzagatti, here in Elite XC, there is the 15-second clock where after he administers a warning, there is that clock, although now we see the action and a great attempt at a guard pass there, but maybe talk a little bit about that 15-second clock. Yeah, the 15-second clock when the uh, referee deems that there is absolutely no action, he will give them a warning. After the warning, if there's no action, he will call to the timekeeper to turn the 15-second clock on. If there's no advancement after 15 seconds, he will stand them up. Jay, what does Kepsi have to do here to counter the kicking of Corrado, although she's coming forward now? Again, she has to believe in her game, exactly what her corner said. But I, again, I don't think she does. She's been rocked a couple of times. She's gone in for takedowns, and it hasn't worked for her. She walks into a kick again, going for a sloppy shoot. Nice brawl there by Corrano. Corrano trying to get, and that is full mount. Now she has her back, and we'll see if she attempts to go for the rear naked choke on the back door. Escape by Kenzie, who gets hit on the way up with a nice one-two combination. Corrano is 
one tough woman. Actually, both of these Tenzin women are unreal. Is equally tough. What a battle here between the ladies of Elite XC, Gina Carano and Julie Kenzie. I do believe that Carano is quite surprised by the fact that uh, Kenzie's taking her punches and taking her kicks, and she's still standing in front of her. I tell you what, because I watched her train last night. It was about 11 o'clock at night. She was training. She was training in the very next goal next to Henzo Gracie, but everything was about getting on top of somebody. Grounding and pounding has not been able to do that in this fight. You have to commend the resilience, the toughness of Julie Kenzie. Talk about how tough these guys are, but uh, these women are equally as tough. And right at the end of another entertaining round, the takedown by Kenzie. She looks battered and bruised, Jay. What does she have to do now? I mean, is there anything left? Yeah, the one thing she has to do is the one thing that she hasn't been able to do. We think we just talked about Get out your takedown. You are circling to your left. You need to go the other way. You're circling toward her power side every time, okay? I know, you're taking some shots. When she clinches like that, and let's not take it at all in her world. Finish, finish. How do you feel? Are you taking deep breaths? Fill up your lungs. Now, if you set it up, it's gonna work. If you set it up, don't overcommit anything until you set something up. And everything you get in there. Here comes the knockdown by Carano. Overhand right, right on the back of the head. What a beautiful setup though with the jab. You guys just followed it up beautifully with that overhand right at 233 of that round. But again, Jay Kensey did not capitulate. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Capitulate. Capitulate. Good word there. Bring, Bring some scrap. And Carano wasn't even tired there in the corner. Conditioning is absolutely phenomenal. But you were asking before what Kedzie needs to do. She needs to continue to try for that takedown, but get on top and use her ground and pound, maybe for submission, and just try and get some points there. And again, a reminder for those of you looking at the clock now and wondering why it started at three minutes, that is where this fight is being contested under with the women making history. And what a historic matchup and entertaining fight this is. Kedzie gets the takedown, but Carano now on the side bottom, cross-side position, north-south here. It's south. exactly what we talked about. See if one place training. Yet. Yeah, we'll see if her training with Paulson paid off right here. She She's has got her she wants to. Under such notable individuals as the aforementioned Eric Paulson, a former pseudo champion, Marco King of the Street, who was, and Debbie Purcell, who has done very well for herself in female mixed martial arts. In fact, she's cross-trained in various forms of martial arts. And now, in this third round, she's going for I think she was originally going for a real naked and kind of slipped out of it. Now she's just trying to make do. And really, let's face it, oh, nice, nice overhand right. Hand. It's obvious that both of them probably need a little bit of work, Jay, on the ground, but you have to give them A for effort. They are definitely not giving any of the other fighters a quarter or giving them an inch. But right now, I guarantee you, Kedzie's thinking in her mind, I got what I needed. I took it, take down, shot in there, had the control I wanted. I still couldn't do anything with it. Getsy goes for the shot and just the simple, simple physical attributes of Carano. This girl at 5'8", 141 pounds, she is deceptively strong, you guys. Yeah, she's very, she, she has worked on the takedown defense, no question about it. You can see Carano remaining focused, trying to set up the combination with the jab. We are into the final minute now, the final 60 seconds of what has been a thrilling, historic female encounter here at Elite XC Destiny. Here's great about the world of MMA, guys. You look at both these young ladies and you think to yourself, you see them on the street, hey, what? Nice looking young ladies, not knowing that they can kick your butt. Well, they can kick your butt. Well, maybe they can kick your butt. <laughs> you know, guys, back in my day, I've had the pleasure of calling many female mixed martial arts fights, Muay Thai battles, but this one is definitely right up there. What a debut for the women of mixed martial arts here tonight on Showtime. Carano wanting to finish it with a flurry, but Kepsi says, no way, I'm going to go right down to the wire with you, sister. Let's just enjoy this last 20 seconds of this fight. <laughs> Great heart by Julie Kenzie all fight long. But you know what? Kenzie needs to finish in a flurry nice because right now it's Carano's fight to lose. Kenzie goes for the takedown. She stood right up by Carano. A knee by Carano. And this fight will go to the judges as both fighters receive a great.
great round of applause. They embrace each other. Tremendous moments, a tremendous fight for mixed martial arts, and they're receiving a standing ovation from the huge crowd in attendance at the DeSoto Civic Center. What a moment. I think they have just broken some serious ground for women MMA. That's promoter Gary Shaw, of course, famous for his success in boxing. He had the foresight to bring mixed martial arts to Showtime. You heard him there, you guys. These ladies have made history, and they should be proud, both of them. What a fight it was. I, and exactly what Bill said, too. Groundbreaking. The reason why is because I'm sure there's people at home who are saying women fighting full contact. Well, that's just not right. But I tell you what, we talked about it before. And technically, these two women were fantastic. Showed a lot of heart and even a lot of power. Surprising power. Gina's father, Gino Carino, or make that soy, Glenn Carano. <laughs> in the cage as well. Here we're going to watch the replay. Watch the takedown right here. Caught the leg. Dropped her. Leg whip takedown. Beautifully done. But unable to pass the guard. You see the strength there, Bill, of Gina Carano doing a good job of not really allowing Kenzie, even though she had north-south position, didn't allow her to exploit that. Yeah, Kenzie had, had her in some, uh, some very precarious positions there, and it looks as if Gina's really been working on her ground game. Uh, they both do need some more work. There's no question about it. And this is how she came out of the guard off the ground. She drops the right missile. Boom. Just rock the head of Julie Kedzie. And that was flush. And you got to hand it to Kedzie for being able to get up. From Julie, that. come on. Here's the end of the fight. They're banging, banging, banging right till the end of the bell. There they go into the fence. And what a way to end the fight in each other's arms, honor. embracing just honor. a tremendous moment. And let's now go to the official decision with classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Got a standing ovation after that fight, too. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. The judges are in agreement. Here are the score totals. Judges at ringside, Jeff Mullen and Bill Clancy both scored about 29 to 28. Judge at ringside, Keith Hughes, sees it 30 to 27. All three in favor of the winner. And still undefeated, Gina Carano. There is her father, Glenn Carano, former NFL and USFL quarterback. And uh, you saw the look on Julie Kedzie's face. She may have lost the fight, but she thought at least she should have been given a round on some of those judges' scorecards, Bill. Yeah, you know, there was a, a lot of disappointment on her face, but I, she should be very, very proud of herself. Both of those ladies did a wonderful job. I get you right there, Dennis. No. There he is, a proud father, smiling ear to ear, Glenn Carano, former football, great with the Dallas Cowboys and in the United States Football League, and uh, definitely proud of his daughter, Bill, you played in the NFL. And uh, let's now go to another guy familiar with the NFL, Jay Glazer. All right, here with both combatants, I got to tell you what, what a great fight on both of your cases. What do you think that this has done for, you know, the woman's side of mixed martial arts? The fact that you two stood in there and just banged and banged and banged showed great heart. I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? You guys want to see something like this again? We were saying Bill Goldberg said a cage outside. This could be you know, groundbreaking. It was something that I think fans at home maybe weren't expecting. I'm sorry. What was the question? <laughs> sorry. I got hit in the head a lot. <laughs> just this side, though. Yeah. They, they, Bill Goldberg saying this could be groundbreaking because the fact that you two guys just stood there and put on such a great performance, win or lose, what do you think this did for the sport? Oh, I think it showed that women are here. I think you guys better expect us for a long time. We throw down like the guys. All right, we're going to take a re look at the uh, replay right here. Obviously, you had that right hand going for you for, for quite some time. Take us through this. Uh, hit her with my right hand. She went down, <laughs> and she came back up for more like she did every single time. She kept on coming back. That was awesome. Congratulations, Julie. Congratulations to you, Amanda. Julie, was she ever close to putting you out? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, I can't admit that, can I? Oh, uh, let's just say, um, let me just say that I've heard a lot of flack on the internet about people doubting Gina's reputation as a fighter. 
And from somebody who's been around and fought some of the toughest people, Gina's one of the toughest people. So you guys better be ready for her. Gina, I gotta tell you, equally as impressive. We took a look at you in between second and third rounds. Didn't seem like you were winded at all. Um, no, I try to pace myself because I heard Jilly was such a tough competitor, and so I was like, all right, I can't just go blow my load on the first like couple seconds. So I tried to pace myself, and then I started, you know, I didn't do as much as I could in the third round, but I'm just glad that we came all the way here and we're done, and it turned out wonderful for us and for the sport. So, what, what would you like to do next? Um, I'm gonna do whatever Gary Shaw puts me, you know, and I hope Julie's with us. So, Showtime, thank you, Gary, thank you, a Pro Elite, you guys are freaking awesome, and um, we'll be back for more. And I think just a great showing from two competitors showed an awful lot of heart. Thank you very much, and thank you to my sponsors, to Debbie and Adam, and to my sister back home. Hey. <laughs> Thing. Okay, you can obviously like see the sponsorship on my pants and everything, so I'm not going to say that, but thank you friends, family, fans, you guys are all so wonderful and you guys made this happen for us, and so live, live your dream, you know, don't ever let anybody tell you no. All right, again, great fight, guys, let's send it back to ringside. And that'll do it from the DeSoto Civic Center, it ends in controversy as we wrap up the inaugural edition of Elite Extreme Combat for Bill Goldberg, Jay Glazer, and our entire crew. Moro Ranello saying so long from Mississippi.